You may be asking yourself, can we please leave South America? No. No, you cannot. Because unfortunately, we still have plenty to show off in this DLC. What will we do today? Potentially conquer all of South America for the 15th time? Okay, it's Chile time. Little fun fact about Chile that you might not know is it's in fact a giant line. Wow. Hello, welcome to Chile. You can tell everything's good because of all these red numbers I have in my spirits over here. That means everything is going perfectly fine. Alright, so on our only Chile has two interesting paths you can do. One where you just become French, which I... Uh, <coughs> one where you can become French, which sounds amazing, or you can go ahead and liberate all of the Americas under the natives. I wonder which one we'll be doing. Not the French one. Yeah, just kidding. I'd much rather be doing the French one, because then you don't have to conquer all the Americas again, which I've already done too many times you know actually one of the reasons i don't want to do the old french path is because you become this horrible green color on the map and i just i can't stand to look at that today so before the native uprising commences and we overthrow our overlord carlos abinez del campo famous for inventing guitars well we have to go down like 50 focuses down here as usual which will eventually lead to me taking over all of south america and then eventually into north america it sounds a lot easier than it probably will be because let's be real it ain't ever easy but there is one hell of a payoff at the end of all of this conquering we have to do and it's all let down here in one one single focus. Although I do want to note that I'm probably going to have to conquer the entire world to even do it. So let's get real comfy today, Timmy. All right, so we've got to go ahead and elect our axe bearer now for the upcoming war of uh everything really yeah we're not really gonna stop for anyone and we get a few good choices here we get war support division attack on core territory straight up division attack and defense or stability and war support i'm gonna go for the middle one as i think the overall attack will be better than anything else yeah that's right girl zero percent stability in my life for one a piece okay so we have the option whether or not we want to bring the communists into our cause but i think we're going to keep this a purely anarchal one today and say uh, no thank you bro yeah i gotta say it already our mapuche nationalism is already kicking off to a great start look at these bonuses we are getting from the get-go and on top of that we haven't even buffed it all the way we're gonna get 10 percent research speed just from one focus alone i love paradox are like, you gonna go the batshit crazy focuses all right make sure you make them as bad shit as possible okay good news everybody finally time to take over the country via civil war the news about chile is it's just a big line so you can do a few naval invasions and really mess up the ai okay so no fooling around with this one we're gonna try and take out everyone as quickly as we can even though it's already january 1939 i swear the game runs faster now in argentina was really fun because i just walked around their lines with my cavalry that doesn't even have full strength oh well, that sure was interesting and fun can't wait to have to do that again okay we have now done our crusade against imperialism which will give us a justify war goal time of minus 80 percent and also makes everybody hate us it is a bit of a pain because usually we just get ourselves a uh, free war goals everywhere so we wouldn't have to manually justify and everything but you know what I, I guess today we're just not that lucky but when we have gone ahead and annexed someone we can then go ahead and liberate them which uh, makes another friendly little native nation for us to be great friends with uh, apparently not friendly enough for them to request garrison support though what the hell uruguay uh sorry what the hell charura nation uh, it does mean that we can just steal the units they spawn with though and move on to our next target oh yeah next target is paraguay by the way oh yeah also apparently if i click this button over here it spawns like a fat baby oh it's not a fat baby it's just a normal baby with a cool little hat and uh, also another four units just gonna borrow those don't mind if i do <sighs> One of my favorite things about this is um, I get such a big fleet just from killing all the oh we killed brazil by the way and now they're great pindorama uh but yeah if you just like uh taking everyone out down here and taking their fleet you actually do get quite a big fleet which uh not really good in battle but enough to project enough power that you don't have to worry about naval invasions um 
Although I'm not protecting the little baby over here, so you best learn to fight for yourself. Uh, yeah, also, just releasing these puppets is great. I get so many units. And then, as soon as I do this as well, I can just shorten the border every time so we can actually fight on a condensed front. And the AI still has to garrison this land because they think I might call them in. Uh, just, uh, you keep all your units on that one tile. Just... Straight up nail invade behind you, why don't I? Uh, <laughs> just in my grand coalition of <laughs> my native tribes over there. Good news, everybody. The Incans are back and they stole my province when I released them, which sucks because I had factories over here. All right, but this is good. The US is now in the Allies and I do need to take them out. That's a really big Romania. Oh, there you go. Columbia joined the Allies. Doesn't matter at this point. It ain't gonna stop us. Okay, this has put us in... In a bit of a united South American state down here, kind of, not really, almost there. Uh, but now with the rest of my army, well, what's left other than our mountaineers, I'm just going to leave all of these guys just to garrison everything and then hope for the best while I build my brand new army to kill everything else. But not before we create the grand kingdom of El Dorado, baby. Looking pretty good. Oh, I just realized uh, Ecuador... They just stuck on the Galapagos. <laughs> I didn't do that. I think Peru. I think Peru actually killed them before I did. All right, now because Mampa is pretty limited at the moment, I am also just going to use all of my puppets units to mostly field our actual army, which we will be using to take down America. Now, what's really damn cool about this native stuff, though, is that Brazil does keep their focus tree if you reorganize them, which uh, makes them way more powerful because they can do all their focuses to get all their resources and all their buffs which is gonna help me a lot later on and also another good reason to release uh el dorado up here is that they get all these resources as they have cores on them and then you can trade for them for pretty much free i just get one civilian factory on there and i get pretty much uh, all the aluminiums I'm going to need for a while, so I do want to get some planes out. Uh, and obviously, same goes for Brazil as well. Get all the rubber, which means I don't have to trade overseas with Japanese and get convoy raided. Also, speaking of convoy raiding, I'm going to be doing a bit of that soon. We, we can also just create an ungodly amount of mountaineers, which again is going to help us a lot coming forward as getting it fully upgraded with all the buffs is just it's insane, like, how good you can make your Mountaineers now. Yeah, but I, I just get a straight-up 25% capacity multiplier just from this one focus, which, you know, I ain't saying is overpowered, but my 23% division organization might be a little bit overpowered. Operation Rolling Central American Thunder has begun. Uh, I've also got a few of my submarines already harassing any shipping in the Caribbean, which is good. Um... Not sure what's going on here, Britain. Uh, but uh, we are definitely intercepting quite a bit because for some reason the AI just seems to really want to kill me and not bother with the Germans. And I think they should be bothering with them looking at what's happening right now. And we got ourselves another puppet. It's the Isfo a merry Indian state and look how wonderfully green they are. The uh, best part about taking out the Central American guys is they literally have just been building all their equipment the entire game and as soon as they capitulate, boom, straight into the piggy bank. Okay, so as soon as we take out Guatemala now, I took a little bit of time to build up the Air Force. That means we are straight on into the Allies. I'm going to go ahead and focus on raiding around the UK now just to keep them weak and hopefully... Uh, alive long enough for us to get a capitulation going. But the real good news is, as soon as I actually capitulate the US, and Mexico, and Canada, I won't even have to worry about the Germans being alive for how powerful I'm about to become. Oh, let's give it a go. And our man is just so darn good at this point that uh, we are just rolling over everything in front of us right now. Hey, and there goes the Mexicans. That's going to leave a few of the allies encircled in places here, but we're just going to rush straight into America now and hope for the best. So glad the last stand of Vancouver is being held by the Italians. If there's a big time skip, so not really showing too much in this, but yeah, USA and Canada capitulated. We're now heading 
Oh, I was going to go say we're going to go invade uh, the UK, but Spain's just landed anyway. Uh, yeah, but a lot of this you, you kind of already just saw in the Argentina video, so I, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a lot more to show off. I mean, I literally uh, invaded all of America in the last one. Unsurprisingly, I've invaded all of America in the next one, and now we got to capitulate the UK and get this over with. We get a peace conference with the Allies. Also, I do have to say, getting these submarines absolutely destroyed all of them. <laughs> like, they they lost their footing over here. They lost everything in the UK because I'm assuming the Allies just have no convoys left. Yeah, I wish I could do my own naval invasion, but if Spain's opening the way for us, I'll take it. Oh, yeah. Also, it's 1947 and Spain's in the war. Um, I don't know if I even mentioned that. <laughs> but yeah, literally, there's no... I don't even have air here. My Mountaineers are just rolling over them completely. You know, I I don't want to say this folk tree is slightly overpowered like all the other South American ones, but it's slightly overpowered. Oh, it's going to be a little bit awkward. Though. I only have 20% war participation, but I'm hoping that's enough that I can secure all of the Americas. I'm really hoping that's, <laughs> that's how it goes. Uh, I mean, we got 2.4k points. That should be more than enough right there's not a lot i have to take okay there are oh, i forgot to take their navies you know what? i don't even care i'm not really <laughs> hey we got everything we wanted which is most important because now we need to liberate the rest of our little native states but it won't end there hey but there you go there is a completely liberated americas i do we have anything for the caribbean we might have something for the caribbean also it got pretty bad at one point i'm unscraping the barrel hey but not for too long as i'm about to <laughs> blow your damn mind you see after releasing everyone you can do this at any point if you really want to get some manpower as soon as i had all of south america i probably should have popped this because uh yeah i was um I was definitely struggling for manpower. But as soon as you have everyone puppeted over here, and sure, it's 1947. Let's just pretend I did this way earlier and it's way more beneficial. But you can do unified by will. <sighs> Annexes and gains cause on all Amerindian and Polynesian subject states. So this is going to annex all of my released native states and give me cores on them. I mean, you also have the option for Unified in Spirit, which will just give you a giant vassal swarm, I imagine, with some pretty good buffs, but I think I can do better than that. All right, so just for clarification, I'm currently sitting on 121 factories, uh, 400k manpower on scraping the barrel. We'll see where we'll end up after finishing this. Yeah, also, something definitely wrong with this baby. It's been eight years and it's still a baby. Also, I love the, uh, the United States of Native America's flag. It's just like, you know, you got the Imperial Russian flag right there, or Austria-Hungary, bit of Poland in there, and right down in the middle, it's America. <laughs> My favorite one definitely has to be the Inca, though. It genuinely just looks like a chicken surrendering to the police. Hey, the moment of truth. Watch as I make everything disappear. Hey, the Grand Federation of Indian Peoples. <laughs> 890 factories. Oh, 77 million manpower. You know what? It is what it is. Oh, you know what? It's actually going to be a lot more than that. Let me just delete all these units to boom. 80 million on the dot. That is pretty disgusting. Oh, probably should have brought Ecuador into the fold as well, but, you know, I kind of forgot they exist. Don't really care. Yeah, I don't know why. People keep seeing, uh, keep talking about how cool it is just to release all the natives, but no one talks about what happens after, and I think that's way more impressive. Hey, but we ain't done just yet, all right? It's time to reverse the roles on these uh, imperialist Europeans a little bit. Oh, I just realized they shall not pass. If you just wait until now, uh, that will give you a level two land fort in every single one of my provinces. Okay, so we're gonna go to war with the Axis through Hungary, because I don't want to deal with the Jap... Actually, I probably don't have to worry about the Japanese looking at things right now. Uh, interestingly, though, Soviets still holding on quite strong uh almost impressive if they could actually um push back why do i still have the option to blockade venezuela i am venezuela i was kind of hoping the germans would join the war by now but they have still not done it and i am at war with some of the axis so i guess i'm just gonna declare war on them anyway and uh, go to war japan i was waiting just so i could get my rubber production going but it is moving on up now so i don't have to worry about losing all of it so uh yeah 
Time for a tussle. Uh, yep, yeah, you know, Mountaineers, even our supply, just rolling over everything in them, <laughs> in their way. News is, I'm having the great submarine off with the Germans and the, uh, the Spanish right now. They're raiding me. I'm raiding them into oblivion. It's all fun and games. Uh, I do have naval bombers, but then I'm having the best time actually spotting these submarines, because I don't have any radars. <laughs> but eventually, it should clear up, hopefully. Oh, I, I only just realized that, um, the Regno del Sud just exists, and it's just hanging out in the south now. Um, <laughs> why did no one take that? So one of the uh, big drawbacks of being the natives is you only get uh, one extra research slot in your entire tree, which is over here. And uh, making do with two research slots for the first part of the game and then moving on to three, it's not very good. Uh, so still to this day, I am still researching stuff. I'm just getting my tanks done now. And uh, obviously we went fully into the Mountaineers and stuff like that, which is why I'm a little bit behind on some things. <clears throat> like radar. Uh, yeah, but I also did fully go down uh, straight into all the submarine techs as well, which I actually did... Well, it carried the majority of the game, I won't lie. I got so much done by just raiding everything into the ground. You do get a couple things to uh, kind of, you know, help you out a little bit. You get a 10% boost from your spirit and a 15% boost from your advisor. So it does it does help a lot, but I, I need more help than this. Oh, yeah, sure, China. You can... You can join. I didn't even realize you were this big. Okay, so as soon as the great uh, air battle in the sky ends, where hundreds of planes a second get blown up, we'll go ahead and land in Europe. You know? I ain't even mad. <laughs> 20,000 planes just went down over northwest France. Hey, now this is what you call a sunset invasion. So on top of using my Mountaineers, I've also made some SPGs with a, you know, <laughs> astonishing 833 soft attack. Oh, uh, Italy is now the kingdom of Italy. And Lilac, loving it, buddy. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, the, uh, the Soviets are still alive, actually. And uh, usually when you do like a late war like this, you'll never really overtake the Soviets because they probably lost, I don't know, something like uh, 17 million men. But, you know, I, uh, oh, the Chinese also lost 13 million to the Japanese. It's just one of those, you know, 1952 games, huh? Hey, but I have actually uh, overtaken them in war participation, which means I must have definitely done a lot of ca- I've done 6.6 .6 million already on the Germans. Nice. Oh, but the Italians still capitulated. <laughs> to the Soviets. Oh, well, there you go. Germans capitulated and they've, um, well, they've, they've run off down to Africa. Oh, they're just completely busted open like the Russian front as well. <laughs> yeah. can imagine how many troops are just stuck over there now. You know, whilst I'm here, it's already 1953 and hours have gone by in real life. Might as well go deeper. Hey, there you go. Both Germany and the Soviets kind of annexed, um, just realized they got left in the middle there. That's not my problem. Uh, do I even bother dealing with Japan? What is the state of you? Big old Navy still. And, uh, I imagine you're gonna be a bit of a pain to naval invade, but sure, I'll give it a go. It's not like you've can really escape your island. Oh, just, uh, realize what's going on in Switzerland. They're communist, if you can't tell. Oh, yeah, I imagine that'll, uh, that'll be pretty much it. And, uh, I'm just gonna politely say I don't care. Oh, uh, maybe I should have cared. Japan just now lives in Siberia. <laughs> hey, but 1954, almost 55, I've played way too long, and that was Chile. I think it is uh, definitely safe to say they might be a little bit overpowered. Now, they would be more overpowered if you could do what I did, but way faster, which you definitely could. I was messing around quite a bit, not taking it too seriously, because I did intend to play this long in the first place. Hey, but at the same time, I think this might be the perfect nation to do World Conquests if you ever, for some reason, want to. Because not only do you get just a ton, of course, all over Americas, um, you also get an insane buff to your compliance, which 
helps a lot. So like, even as I've only just taken Germany, they're already up to 67% compliance, which is great. Uh, so yeah, I think Chile is again, like all the other nations in South America, very overpowered, but I am so done looking and playing in South America at this point. Um, probably not as done as the people of Ecuador. Just chilling on the Galapagos, looking at turtles. Although in a world that looks like this, I'd actually take the Galapagos and their giant tortoises any day of the week. Hey, but if you enjoyed the video and my grand, <laughs> very sunset invasion of the world, I hope you leave a like and subscribe button down below. We've still got, uh, I guess, a couple more we need to look at in South America. But I do have my new series coming up. It's gonna be an interesting one. You're gonna have to wait and see. Uh, yeah, but anyway, goodbye.